Hi, this is Christian Shaw from Soundflow. I just want to show you here four small scripts that I developed for controlling the fader and pan of the currently selected track's output via the scroll wheel on your mouse. And so you can see here I have assigned mouse scroll down and mouse scroll up to the fader movements while holding down the shift key will control the pan. Let's open up Pro Tools to see how this works for a mono track sending to a stereo output. You can now press Q to toggle the visibility state of the currently selected tracks output window. This is a shortcut that's part of Soundflow's default triggers that get installed when you install Soundflow. So if I scroll a little up and down here, you can see how I'm now controlling the fader movement and by holding down shift, I'm controlling the pan. If I hit Q again to close the track output window, Scrolling either with or without the shift key will function like it normally does in Pro Tools. Let's take a look at how this works for a stereo track sending to a 5.1 track. As you can see, for a stereo track, the pan now controls both the left and the right. Scrolling down will broaden the pan, while scrolling up will narrow it. Of course, you can completely customize this and make it reverse if you prefer to, via the bindings you make in the Soundflow editor. Now let's take a look at how we set these scripts up to begin with. To install these four scripts, you'll need to go into the Installed Packages folder. This is where you can install packages. Packages are collections of scripts that were made by other developers or other users of Soundflow. In this instance, we need to find the package Pro Tools Scroll Faders that I created just moments ago. Once we've found the correct package, click the Install button. Verifying that this is the package we indeed need, we continue to click the Install button once again. Looking under the Install Packages folder, I can now see my newly installed package there. If you click it, you can now see the four installed scripts. We are now ready to assign triggers for these commands. Triggers is what determines when a command should be run in Soundflow. First, select the command. Then click the New Trigger button. We now want to specify that this trigger should only run when Pro Tools is active, since we don't want to override any scrolling behavior in any other applications. The middle column is for more advanced use cases and for binding with keyboard shortcuts, so we'll just leave this at none. In the last column, we'll need to choose the keyboard trigger type. Mouse scroll events are in Soundflow, for now at least, viewed as keyboard triggers. So for this command, we'll need to bind a scroll down event. And you can now see that Soundflow registered my scroll down event and I'm ready to assign the trigger. After hitting OK, we now see that the trigger has been saved. Repeat this process for the three remaining commands. And that's it. Now you should be fully set up to using this workflow. Now if we combine this approach with some of the built-in commands in Soundflow, we can make an even more streamlined workflow. Let's hit Alt F10 to put all of our tracks into touch mode. Then I'm going to use Command 2 to set into preview mode. Now all my tracks are prepared for the preview mode. Since volume automation and pan automation are both enabled in the automation window, if I touch the volume button or the pan button on any of these tracks, the preview mode will be engaged for those two parameters. After that, I can then hit the manual write automation to selection button in the automation window to save the touched parameters to the selection. Using the shortcuts that come with Soundflow makes this process even smoother. So let's say we need to set the volume and the pan for the next clip. Hit Command 2 to enable preview. Press Q to open up the track output window. Use the scroll wheel to set a volume level and hit shift scroll to set the pan. Finally, hit command W to write automation to selection and close the windows. And as you can see, those changes were now written to the selection, but the rest of the track was left unchanged. This workflow can be improved upon if you combine it with the shortcuts to open up inserts and sends on the currently selected track. Read more about that on soundflow.org. Thanks for listening to our tutorial.